Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to 10,000 and Below, a continuing series where I go to Board Game Geek, the largest database about board games on the internet, and I'm looking at games that are ranked 10,000 and below. Actually, starting in this video, I'm looking at games that are ranked 11,000 and below. And we're looking at them in groups of 100, and I'm talking about them, pointing out ones that might be good, you might have missed, just looking at them and seeing them for the first time, and sometimes seeing why they might be ranked so low. So here we go. We always look at the first one and the last one for my arbitrary reasons. So the first one here is the Moscow Campaign. This came out in 1972, four years before I was born. So this game, which is 47 years old at this point in time, uh, or 48 years old, I guess, depending on what month it came out in. Whew. Well, you can tell it came out in 1972 for sure. As you look at these counters and the rules, it's a, it's a typical you know, war game that came out during this time period. Uh, it's from SPI. SPI was known for a lot of these war games, and that's about it. It's been rated by only 58 people. All right, so we look down, and you can see that there's going to be several war games here, the Great Eastern War. Here's one. Keops, I think this is how this one is pronounced. Uh, this one came out in 2008. I've heard of this game. You're rival architects, and you're trying to build the Great Pyramid. It's a two-player style game, and it looks not too bad, right? It looks interesting um, as you build the pyramid here with the different paths. I, I kind of like how this one looks a lot, but uh, from White Goblin Games, and for some reason, White Goblin Games don't always make it over to America so easily. Um, the cover looks pretty interesting. It just hasn't really gotten a lot of buzz. So interesting little looking game, though. The last one standing, the Battle Royale game. This came out just a couple years ago. And this one is from a company called Oom. So the, I don't dislike that box cover. It's a little very, very cartoony though. Almost looks like an app. Yeah, the board itself, that's some pretty generic looking pieces. It looks like it's just a run around combat style game. Hmm. All right, moving down, Postcard Dungeons. That sounds like an interesting style game. So it's literally just a postcard that's a dungeon. This came out, I think, during the craze of mini game. Well, 2018, that's not too long ago. It's from a company called Postcard Games and Modest Games. And it's for two to six players. You need to bring your own dice and tokens. Okay. Huh. It has not got a lot of buzz, but that doesn't mean it is bad. It just means it hasn't got a lot of buzz. All right, here we go. Our Atari's Centipede. So um, IDW got the rights to make a lot of games based on Atari. And so they've come out with three so far, I think, this being one of them. Centipede, of course, being one of the most well-known games from this era. This is essentially a two-player game where one person's playing the Centipede, the other person's playing the ship shooting at the Centipede and all the different stuff. Unfortunately, the game is fast and furious. This is not. It doesn't have a lot of options. I was extremely disappointed with how this one played. Did not like it at all. Uh, then we got Monster Cafe. This one came out in 2013. This is a kid's game, I'm assuming. You're just getting the refreshments for the different monsters. And avoid the lemon sorbet. Okay, I remember this one now. You're basically just playing the different cards in the different areas. Funny artwork, a fun game for kids. Magnificent Flying Machines. This came out in 2018 for the first time, and it just had a reprint last year. Uh, I, I believe I saw it at Essen, and I think someone on the Dice Tower may have reviewed it. Well, if not, someone at Dice Tower is certainly looking at it, or it's on the schedule to be reviewed at some point. And this is a, you know, airplane flying game. The designer of this game, incidentally, Richard Deming, uh, or one of the designers of this game, is also one of the organizers of the UK Games Expo. All right, Zombie Town. That's a really generic name for a zombie game, but it looks like it might be based on some sort of comic book. I just just the way the cover looks and everything. But that scientist is. That's an interesting table to be playing that game on. 
Not a ton of pictures here. There we go. Very black and white motif to the game. Meh. Who? Meh. Chess 2, the sequel. I love stuff like this. It's so it's so audacious, you know, to I I made the sequel to chess. This is from David Serlin. Well, there you go. Audacious is his middle name. That's funny. Chess one was a hit. Chess two addresses a few problems. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, it's a variant on chess, I'm sure. This the queen is called a reaper. Can teleport and capture anyone aboard except the enemy's back row. And it can't capture a king. The rooks are ghosts. Two kings. All right, so this is just a, a variant to, to chess. That that's, still makes me laugh, though. The whole, that it's, uh, when did this come out? 2010. It seems like it's just a bunch of rules, though. There's six armies. I wouldn't even be opposed to playing this. Um, it just cracks me up, the, the name of the game. All righty, Tonga Island. Let's take a look at this one here. I like the name of it. 2009. Uh, Stefan Dora, who's a well-known designer, and Robinsberger, a big publisher. This one may never have shown up in English, although I really like how it looks. Looks like you're connecting different routes on the board. I like it. Well, I like how it looks anyway. Now we're down to Timeline, 2003. This is one of the games from Cheap Ass Games. Uh, James Ernest, it was called the Hip Pocket Games, 48 cards, and you needed to provide your own stuff to play these games. That's how they all worked. And you're just crossing paths here. Looks a little bit more abstracted than you might want for a time game, although I do like those custom little uh, Doctor Who booths. Yeah, I like, I mean, this actually doesn't, doesn't, discourage me from playing. James Ernest games are like all over the place. There's some brilliant ones. There's ones that are okay. This one here uh, has a pretty low ranking on it, but then again, remember it's kind of a, just a small pocket game, so it might be pretty good. Um, let me look at the comments and see if there's... All right, yeah, you can see the spread over here is mostly towards sixes. Not a bad little game. <laughs> all righty. So not a lot of people are rating it highly. Alrighty, then we jump down to Double Feature. So this is a movie uh, trivia style game. John Kovalik did this one from Renegade Games. This is not one that they really talk about nowadays. But you are flipping over two different cards and then trying to find a movie that matches them. So I turn over a setting and a production card and I gotta find a movie that matches those two things that you turn over. It's a pretty good game, I like it a lot. Designed by the, the artist of Dork Tower. There's no way I'm not going to not talk about Weapons and Warriors. You can all talk about your crossbows and catapults to your blue in the face. Weapons and Warriors is where it's at, even if it does have the little orange balls that pop all over the place. But look at that. This is a game in which you were shooting at each other, and this one had the ships, the pirate one. I love this stuff. It's silly and fun. This would be a really fun one to play with my kids, I think. I don't have a copy of this now, but it might be a fun one, especially... Now that we're inside playing these games, this would be a fun one to hunt down. It's probably super expensive these days. All right, let's see. Code Triage, La Belle Alliance, Bots and Balls. I like the name of that one. It looks like an abstract game. Well, that's very intriguing. Huh. So you're moving up this pyramid type thing? What is this game? It's a self-published game from Ann Lesnick. Huh. Well, those are really nice pieces. If those are the pieces that come with them, they look like the, that, that stuff that's modeled out of clay. Okay, that's probably what the game actually looks like. It looks like an interesting abstract game. So, let's see. It's uh, Ricochet Robot Soccer. I'm in. I like that concept a lot. Oh. Ten copies were made at the Gathering of Friends in 2008. Ten more copies. So this is a very, very limited game. But it's still ranked pretty high for getting only a few ratings. Oh, there you go. Uh, let's see. Dragon Large. Tom Wham is one of the designers of this. Oh, you can see this has that, that artwork of... It just looks like it comes from that era. I would say like the 90s when I looked at this one. A Dragon's Game. 
and this is from Margaret Weiss Productions. Okay, Margaret Weiss, uh, one of the authors of the Dragonlance novels. This is a, in this cousin of St. Petersburg. I've never heard of this. When did it come out? 2007. Hmm. Interesting. This is why I like going through these because I'll see games that I've not seen before. Synod, uh, Oathswood, Into the Deep Wood. Woo this game will not be in the 10,000 and below soon once it comes out. If you've not seen this fantastic game, we played it live on the Dice Tower, where you it's a bunch of warriors and you fight one giant monster. Those trees are ridiculously huge, but you fight one giant monster, and the, the rat is the one that they show in the cover, and I've seen that one. I'm sure there's other monsters, but it's kind of a surprise, and it's just one mega fight. Although before you fight this giant creature, you go through some cool storytelling stuff. I really like it. Uh, Toscana. This is a game that has over 300 ratings, and I have not played this one. It came out in 2001. Rio Grande did it. Uh, you have 16 tiles. One said, okay, and one person's the plaza player, one person's the roof player, and you got a had the biggest collection of roofs or plazas. That looks like a, a wooden version. There, that looks like the actual version. Okay, so it's like an abstract strategy game where you're just trying to connect. Yeah, unfortunately, that's a really dull looking game. It might be a great little abstract game where you're just placing these tiles and trying to connect them to form a big group. That seems pretty simplistic. Oof, well, that, that's some pretty rough looking looking game there. All right, here's a game called Gods. This came out in 2001, has 169 people. Michael Shocked. Okay, this one also doesn't look like it ever came out. You are gods competing for worshipers. Okay, so again, it has that 90s look to it. Artwork-wise, components don't look that great, but it, huh, it seems interesting. Huh. Man, the games that you find down here in, in the bottom. Boo! I gave this one a 7 here. Uh, this one is 2 to 6 players, 2017, Blackwork Games. This is a ghost. You're trying to scare visitors. Ah, that's right. I remember this one. And you can move through only the doors that match certain colors as you move through these rooms. You're trying to figure out how you can move through different doors. It's like a, a logic style type game, and I think it especially works well for kids. Um, I got a quick take a look at this one above it though. Death Note Investigation Card Game. That's kind of fascinating. So this looks like it's based on a manga and anime of the same name. You have to figure out who's using the Death Note. Was it wasn't this like a, a was it like a Netflix movie and a comic book? And yeah, not a lot of information on the game itself there. Alrighty, so we'll slide down here. A lot of interesting games. This game is just called the Category Game. Tannenberg, Midway, Solitaire, Fast Food. So this is a game I played in 2009. I, I reviewed it in 2011. And it's from Goliath Game. You're just trying to make... Oh, yes, I remember this one. It came with the hamburger. And you're just trying to basically play a bunch of cards that will... Uh, match and make your burger as fast as you can. This, I think, is the version I played with, with the round cards. Again, it's a game for kids, and it's fun for them. Primate Fear. This is where apes are afraid of... Oh, that's not exactly... It's set in the same world as Giganto Spock Spank the Monkey, which was a game about, literally, spanking a monkey. Um, uh, that, that company kind of thrived on making uh, games with their provocative titles. This one, I guess, is about, well, looks like gorillas being afraid. Some pretty interesting pieces there. Are you actually building a creature? Huh. All right. I did not hear about this sequel. So there you go. Were Beasts. This is a game from uh, Bezier Games. They make a lot of wear games. This one I really disliked, unfortunately. I, I thought, you know, I, I like the werewolf theme, I guess, and this one you're just collecting sets, but you're also getting points for the people next to you. And it just, it just came down to a big mess and really a lot of luck. I didn't like it at all. Alrighty, there's Sandcastles. Sandcastles is a game that uh, 
who's the designer of this? Andrew Harmon from Yay. I remember seeing this one. It had kind of a Carcassonne look to it as you put these tiles down and build them. I like the idea of building sandcastles. The art doesn't do a lot for this game, unfortunately. And when you're playing a tile laying game like this, that would really help a lot. Uh, Scallywags. This is a game. Is this Game Right who did this one? Let's take a look. Yes, Game Right published this one from Chevy Dodd. Um, who? Uh, what other games has Chevy done? I'm trying to remember. Nope, this is the only one he's done. But he's been involved with the hobby for a while. So anyway, uh, in this game, you it's it's a, originally a print and play game called Doubloons, where you're just basically taking your uh, you're splitting up the things and you don't want to have 10 coins you want to basically get this gold and you're all playing cards at the same time simultaneous selection I have not seen that particular version that's not good art uh, this must be the original print and play Whew. well the game right one looked fine it was a fun simultaneous selection style game but for kids pretty light game um, Tutti Frutti I think I played Tutti Frutti haven't I or it's been sitting on my shelf for a while. Maybe I haven't played this one and I just it's been sitting on my shelf to be played. Magic Fold. I've definitely played this one. I need to give this one a rating. This is one in which you are folding up a sheet of cloth and you're trying to do it as fast as you can and then different things will happen. It's this is the third game in this series where you are folding up the sheets. They're fine, I don't know that you would need more than them, but you have to fold it to match a certain pattern. And so that's pretty much the game, and then they added some extra magic stuff in this one to kind of like flesh out the game. Munera Familia Gladiatoria. This came out in 2010. You are playing an entrepreneur, you're trying to invest in the gladiators. Okay, I like that concept a lot. Oh, there certainly is a lot of cards and pieces, and the artwork is not. Oh, oof. not a fan of the artwork. It might be an interesting game, but it's the the production value isn't selling me on it. All right, the Patrons of Venice. I reviewed this a decade ago, so forgive me if I cannot remember this game. This is from Tocata Games. Wow. Um, I am really struggling to remember this one. Wow, it sure looks like a print and play. I had a lot. Huh. You change things. I'm kind of remembering this one from Takata Games, but man, folks, I'm sorry. I can't tell you much more about it. I gave it a seven. I must have thought it was fine. I'll have to go back and watch my own review of the game. <laughs> All right, moving on here, loot, personality, Fox's Party. This is another kid's game. You'll, you'll, again, you find a lot of kid's games ranked lowly on this list because they just are. And you're pushing your luck, and you need to remember what the animals are. So it's push your luck slash memory, something I'm not good at. Uh, yeah, the different animals are better than the last animal type thing. Like the bear is better than the deer, which is better than this, all the way down to the ant. All right, let's see. Oh, here's Finale. This game from 1998 has 240 ratings. It is a soccer style game or football, depending on where you are in the world. Um, I'm not sure this one ever came out in English, did it? Let's see what it says here. Yeah, Cosmos. So that's why I've never played this one. Two player game, square cards, you put them in positions, and then you'll put your players and rotate them and in skill points. Okay. So it's a soccer game, but it's really abstracted out. Doesn't sound bad, but also not a very high rating. Jackal and High. So I reviewed this one. Oh, I remember this one. It has various dice here. It looks like they're all eight-sided dice. And you are rolling and trying to get specific numbers on the board, uh, depending on what you roll here. And I don't. some of the numbers did various things. It was a dice-chucking game, and it was okay. Beep, beep. This game from 2008, uh, oh yeah, it came with a little car, so there's that. You're trying not to hit wildlife. I don't like how it looks. It's cartoony, but it's 
Ah, Reinhardt stop. It just did not work well for me. This is from the defunct Valley Games, who no longer exist. And you are simultaneously matching the animal or color. So when three are the same thing, you hit the squeaky animal. Very, you know, there's a lot of these games, Jungle Speed. And this one doesn't beat those out, so therefore, hmm. I, Dark Overlord, the green box. I didn't know the green box was a thing. I, Dark Overlord, is a game in which you are uh, giving tasks to other people and... Okay, there's, that's the art. And uh, you have to like obey, and you're trying to be the best servant that you possibly can to somebody else. It's more, and then you're shifting blame on other people. But it is barely a game, okay? It is barely a game because you just, one person can be like, nope, the blame falls on you. Nothing you can do about it. There's, again, it's more of an experience than it is a game. The possession here has almost 100, so we'll take a look at this one from 2014. This is from Gen X Games, who tends to like making these dark-looking games. I mean, that is pretty dark, and, um, oh, that's a pretty scary-looking game. I feel like I've seen it. Ew. Yeah, all right, well, if you like that, hey, this looks like... Murder and mayhem. Uh, you're in a wood hem, wooden cabin with some friends, and then you become possessed, and eventually you are trying to kill everybody or survive. Hmm. All right, Genesis. This came out in 2010, so a decade ago. Um, I remember seeing this game, but I don't know that I've ever played it. That's not a great cover, honestly. Hmm. It's from Gigantoscop. Peter Hansen is the the designer of this. I think he, yeah, okay. So this is from the same company who made, I just talked about him, Primate Fear and Spank the Monkey. And uh, I don't think I played this one, so. I don't know that it would be a great game, though. Uh, because his games, again, aren't that highly rated. But he got a lot of people to play it. 295 is not a small number. All right, Apples to Apples to Go. This is a small version of Apples to Apples. Apples to Apples is kind of looked down now by people. And this is not the normal Apples to Apples. I'm sure that's higher rated. But Apples to Apples is still a solid game. And this is just a short little, a smaller one. And this is one of the ones from Mattel rather than out of the box. Triple Yahtzee. Ah, you know what? I'm going to... Uh, I think it's it's possible here that I have never played, I've never ranked this one. I'm going to give this one a 7 out of 10. I like Triple Yahtzee. Triple Yahtzee is just Yahtzee, but you're filling in three sheets at the same time. So you can, uh, you know, when, when you're filling things in, you can do something once, twice, or three. You know, if I roll a bunch of sixes, and then on my next roll I get another bunch of sixes, I can still do sixes on a second thing, and I like that concept. It just felt a little bit more open than Yahtzee. I still don't think Yahtzee's an amazing game, but Yahtzee's fun, but I'll always play triple Yahtzee. Here's the thing, though. You literally can just play triple Yahtzee with Yahtzee. You don't need to buy the specific triple Yahtzee to play it. All right, Storage Wars, the game. So this is based on that very popular TV show, which I, uh, I thought Storage Wars was pretty stupid. And then one day I was stuck in a hotel and I started, I watched an episode of it and then I watched like eight in a row. I can see why people like it. Um, I've not played this one. I want to say somebody from the, the Dice Tower has played this one. Um, I usually think games based on intellectual properties aren't good. This is from Spin Master. They have made some good stuff in the past. I don't remember who played this, but someone from the Dice Tower said that they liked it. But I don't remember who. All right, Jazz, the singing card game, Daring Dust Bunnies, as opposed to those whiny, afraid dust bunnies. Electronic Detective, this one here is from 1979. I remember seeing this one. Did I play this as a kid? I feel like I might have. Maybe this is one of the ones that we'll see Restoration Games remake at some point. This would be a cool one. It's from Ideal. You're using human deductive reasoning with advanced computer logic to solve over 130,000 different mysteries. That sounds cool. As a kid, this would have really fascinated me. Still fascinates me a bit. Hello, Docs. Uh, 
This is from Klaus Teuber, the designer of Settlers of Catan. This is one that I'm going to assume has not come to America either. Moving around a board. Hmm. Is it a kid's game, I wonder? Hmm. Shootles. Okay, now, so Shootles here is a game. Uh, you see, I gave this an 8. I really wish more people knew about this game. If you come to a Dice Tower convention, there's a chance I'll ask you to play this one. And wait a minute. This is a different game. This is Shuttles. Huh. I ranked the wrong game. I've not played this one. I need to take my ranking off. How do you do that? I don't even know. There it is. Alrighty, never mind. I was about to tell you about the cool game Shootles, but this is Shuttles, which looks like a neat abstract strategy game, which you're sliding these boards back and forth. I would try this one. So, all right, I got excited about a game I've not played. Call my bluff. And finally, the last one. We always take a look at the first and last one. This is the contender, the game of presidential debate. And this is a self social game inspired by the vim and vigor of a real presidential debate. To win, you must use facts, attacks, and distracts. To convince moderator you're fit to lead the free world. Hundreds of one-liners based on real quotes. Yeah, I have zero interest in this. I don't want to play a game with real quotes from real presidents. This was in 2015, so, but still. Uh, yeah. Alrighty. Well, that's the game I probably won't, I'm not interested in. So there you go. Another hundred we've zoomed through. Kind of off the cuff, is there a game I jumped over and didn't uh, mention that you think is interesting or one I did talk about? Either way, mention them in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching 10,000 and Below on the Dice Tower.